Hello and welcome to another edition of Cadence Fishing TV. Today we're at Starcar Lakes, East Yorkshire, and we're on a chappy challenge. And the challenge today is 40 pounder bream. Yeah, we're at, uh, at Star Car Lakes today. Uh, we're on a gravel pit. Got to say, oh, missed a bite. Got to say, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today, and I'll. Chappie's rung me with his challenge, and uh, I've had a couple of days to prepare. And I've picked up a bit of a cold, you know. All them blokes out there can sympathise with me. Man flu, but we'll soldier on. It's a hard life being on the bank. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, we're on, uh, we're on a gravel pit today. And uh, typical gravel pits, uh, the depths vary from uh, Four foot at one end of what we've got, and uh, where I'm fishing today, it's uh, it was the ramp where the uh, vehicles used to drive in. So I've got a gradual slope off, and then it drops off, and I'm fishing just beyond this drop off. I have got caught up a couple of times, but that's one of the hazards. This morning when I got here, I've had a good plumb round thrown a bomb out, found different spots. We've got, uh, like all gravel pits, we've got a bit of a gravel bar, but I've found this, this hole, which is to my left in front of them reeds. And um, it seems to be where I'm getting my bites. I'm fishing two methods today. Uh, uh, one's a ground bait feeder. We cast a chop worm, dead maggots, usual thing and uh, the other is just a hybrid pellet feeder and my bites seem to be coming to the to the pellet feeder at the moment i've had a couple of bream and uh, the challenge is going okay so far because it's early doors yet we've got uh, Bright sunshine, which as, as most bream anglers will know, it's not fantastic for bream. And on top of that, you, you probably don't pick it up on camera, but it's an absolutely freezing cold easterly wind. So as we say around here, I'm a bit nithered. <laughs> and we're in. Don't I just love this? This 11 foot number two is absolutely perfect for this. I don't know whether Chappie can pick this up, but the bend through that rod is just superb. A nice progressive action like all cadence rods. Should you need a bit of power, then it actually gives you that to the middle section. It's a great feeling playing these fish on this rod. Oh, look at that. Hey, they fight these as well, these bream. Another one to the pellet feeder. I'm well happy with that one. A 
another good fish, about three pound. And uh, chappy challenge, I might just do it today. Cold or no cold? We're a lovely fish. Well, we've just changed the ground bait feeder because they seem to have gone off on the pellet. And uh, three minutes and the tip's gone round. And I've got a smaller one. It's not massive, but it's building my weight up. And that was on the 12 foot number two. Look at that, you can't beat it. Yeah, we're encouraged every bite we get. I say small one, but you've got to be happy with fish like that, haven't you? That was on uh, three maggots. As I say, on my ground bait feeder. With bream fishing, personally, I don't like to sit with the uh, with the rod on my knee because with a, when you're fishing for bream, you're looking for a positive bite. I won't say that they hang themselves, but you'll you'll get a little tap, little tap, and then hopefully, if all goes well, you'll get that slow pull round. So to try and uh, stop your striking on those little knocks and twitches, I set up with um, two rod rests. Obviously the one out there that's positioned just to give me an angle to where I'm feed, where my feeder is out there which is uh, probably about 45 degrees which is I find round about perfect. I've got the tip set just above the water that keeps the line underneath the water so when the wind picks up it's not buffering and, and the line isn't getting caught in the little waves and ripples that there are, giving you them false indications. The back end, as you can see, I've got, uh, I've got this rod rest here, quite a long one. It means, you know, should I wish to adjust position, I can move the rod backwards and forwards. And, and if you like, I can alter the tip. If, you can, if Chappie can pick that up, you can see I've got a good bend in my tip there. I just move the butt end along and I can set that up as sensitive as I want, which is a nice little handy tip. That uh, it finds I find that a lot better. The main rod rest, the front one, if is uh, set in a position 
so I can get a good view of the tip. So I like, I like to set it so when I'm looking out, I get a pretty straight view of that tip. Um, we've got Chappie filming it today, so he might pick up a few bites that you see anyway as well. Right, the front, the main rod rest, I like to have set out at quite a distance from my box because it holds the rod more stable, especially in these windy conditions. If you have it set close in, which, uh, which I do sometimes, I, I, have it, I do have it set close in, especially when I'm waggler fishing. But the problem with that is when the wind's buffering it, like it is today, it's quite a strong wind, uh, that you get the rod moving about, wobbling about. In, in, in fact, it's, it's been buffered now, but it is holding it quite stable because it's set at that distance. And, uh, and as we said before, tip close to the water and uh, your line is then sunk under the water, so that's, that's how to set that up. I'm just gonna recast again, because that's been in five minutes. When I'm bream fishing, and especially early on into the session, and uh, we've had a few now, so I know there's plenty hanging, uh, knocking about. I like to cast uh, pretty regular and, and uh, as a guideline, Every five minutes is what I like to cast. Keeps the bait going in. And when they do turn up, you'll get a feel for how long you've got to wait for a bite. Out we go again. 30 meters out. Is where I've found the depth of this drop off. And I believe that the bream patrolling around the bottom of that drop off, set the rod up. Yeah, as I was saying, uh, regular casting gets that bait in there. Bream are a hungry fish and they'll, uh, they'll soon devour the, the bait you put in there. You'll be surprised at how much they can eat. I've got a good mix in my ground bait. I've got plenty of particles in. We'll have a look at that later on and I'll explain my reasoning behind that. But uh, the bream tend to come home in on your, on your bait. They'll come to the splash. Anything, a bit like when you're loose feeding, you keep loose feeding, it attracts the fish. We seem to have uh, done away with the roach bites. I was getting roach bites earlier on in the session. So uh, it, it seems that it's settled down now just purely for the bream and you do get an odd tench, but I think it's a bit early on in the year for them. It's freezing cold today, that easterly wind's not helping. So uh, it's pretty much concentrating on bream today. But I've found uh, the best bait so far is uh, double or triple live maggot, which is a little bit unusual because uh, dead maggot usually seems to work the best when you're maggot fishing for bream, but I haven't been able to get a bite on a dead maggot. The live one's definitely working the best. Right, here we go. Pick your marker, hit your spot. Rod sunk under the water. It's moving round. Feeders hit the bottom. And we'll just give it a few seconds for the bow to come out of the line and uh, we're gently tightening the reel handle. That's just tightening up to the tip. So you can set the tip as you want. Right, there we go. So what happens when your feeder drops down through the water column, it doesn't matter how tight your line is, 
to your rod. Once that feeder hits the bottom, your hook length is directly above it. Your feeder hits the bottom and then your hook length just gently follows down. And that hook length, when you've got no great toe or you're fishing in the still water, will drop right next to your feeder. And so what we do then, which I'm just about to do it now, just to get the hook length slightly away, we've given the ground bait time to absorb a bit of water and I'm just going to pull it. And that's straightening the hook length out and you'll encourage a bite when you do it half the time, which is what happened there. It seems that the bream have disappeared at the moment. But that's the, that's the theory put into practice. As you straighten that hook length out, the movement on that feeder attracts the fish. And then the fish are searching about for your maggots or whatever bait you've got on your hook. But to me it's quite important to pull that hook bait away from your feeder. Sometimes you may have noticed when you've, when you've wound in, especially if you're fishing with the distance feeders with the weight on the bottom, you'll come through and, and you've, got a, you've got your maggot or your hook through your feeder and you think, how has that happened? And what happens is, as I said, your feeder's on the deck and your hook length just drops slowly through. And half the time, that bait will drop straight onto the top of the feeder. So by pulling it away, pulling the feeder away after that few seconds, you'll pull it away and then as the, f the fish are swimming around your feed area, they'll pick that up and, and register your bait. The mystery of, of the hook length through your feeder, that's how it happens. The one time you won't use it, or you won't do that, is when you're fishing a pellet feeder, a method feeder, which involves that short hook length, and, and half the time you're concealing your, your hook bait in that uh, method or the pellet feeder. So you, when your pellet feeder hits the bottom, you want that to be totally stationary. Because the idea behind the pellet feeder is the fish coming in and grubbing on, on top of those pellets and just sucking the whole ball of pellets in and, uh, and your hook bait along with it. So uh, that rule that we just talked about doesn't apply to the uh, method or the pellet feeder. When we're fishing uh, the ground bait feeder, obviously we can vary the lengths of your, uh, of your tail, your hook length, and uh, quite often I will fish with a, with a long hook length if I'm struggling to get bites. And the reasoning behind that is feeder falling through the water. It's, it's giving off bits of ground bait, particles and things. Your feeder thumps to the bottom and then as we, as we said, your hook bait's dropping through. And the longer that hook length is in that water column and dropping through, the better chance you have of attracting fish that's up in the layers a bit and quite often they'll follow that down to where your feeder is so uh, so it can be beneficial to to mess about with the length of your uh, your hook length from anything from well I, I've used them up to four or five feet long in still waters and and it's worked quite well and uh, and that method with altering your tail your hook length tail works uh, particularly well in deep venues like we have here at, at Starcar. Right, so the reasoning behind uh, me today using ground bait feeder and a pellet feeder is I'm trying to establish really where the, where the fish want to be and, and of course what they want to eat. But uh, the ground bait feeder, as we've said, with that hook bait falling through the water slowly attracts the fish and uh, the pellet feeder straight down to the bottom and if fish, fish are actu actually actively searching for bait on the bottom, 
that can sometimes be an absolutely deadly method. It's, it's all about keeping your options open. Some days the ground bait feeder will work better, some days the pellet feeder will work better. If you can establish on that day which is the best by trying them both out, then uh, you should have a good day. Right, the open-ended feeder set up today. Uh, I'm using the Cadence CR10 12 foot number two. This in particular is my favorite bream rod. I can cast distances 50, 55 yards, no problem at all in, uh, in most conditions. Uh, what I like about these rods is the progressive action and, uh, and it's same with all the Cadence rods really. A nice soft top, progressively getting stiffer and more powerful as you go down to the butt section. There's uh, generally, to all the rods, there's a number one, a number two and a number three. Number one being the softest and number two middle and number three the more powerful. We reckon this is around about 10% increments so number one, uh, number two should I say, is 10% more powerful than the number one and number three is 10% more powerful than the number two. So if you're looking for something with a bit more power, then uh, you go for the number three. Uh, the medium one is the number two and the softer one, the number one. And uh, the playing action is the same to them all, uh, where they've got that nice soft tip and uh, absolutely beautiful to handling fish. Right, the reel I'm using today on the uh, open-ended feeder setup is the CS7 4000. I've got that loaded to the brim with six pound Maxima. Uh, this is a typical setup, uh, the way I set up my feeders anyway. On this, uh, on this lake here and the rules of the fishery demand that we use free running rigs. As you can see, I like to fish with a Paternoster rig for bream especially when I'm fishing at uh, medium range to close range. So I've got uh, a free running link that I make up myself, attached to a swivel bead there. I've got a fine jewellery bead just to stop it running over the knot there. So you've got no extra weight or anything on that line. It all runs free. I've got a twizzle boom as you can see, running down to a quick change link there. The idea of the boom, you might have seen when we're uh, casting out, it throws the line away from the feeder. And the tip is with that boom is to always make it so your uh, quick change link is hanging just below the feeder. From that quick change link, I've got O12 main line, because we're only bream fishing, and that's attached to a 
B911 F1 hook. Nice fine wire hook. Absolutely perfect for bream fishing. Right, so uh, going on to my uh, other rig, which is the uh, pellet feeder, or in this case it's a hybrid feeder. I'm using the uh, Cadence CR1011 foot number two again, uh, just simply because I do like the actions of the number two. And uh, I find it absolutely ideal for throwing out small methods and, uh, and the hybrid feeders. It's a great combination. And uh, yet again, obviously, same, same with this as with the 12 foot. All the actions which we've gone through, exactly the same. Real pleasure to use. I've got that combined with the CS8, 4000 reel this time. And uh, again, same with all the reels. Really smooth and powerful. Absolutely lovely reel. And that's loaded up with a seven pound line this time. Um, because fishing the pellet feeder, there's always that chance of hooking a carp, so I want to be able to handle it. And uh, as we've just discussed with the other rig, free running, hybrid feeder, and that's just attached. I can just get that off, just to show you. I've just got that attached via a loop, just to a swivel there. And then I put uh, the bead on. That covers that, my hook length, four inch hook length, or 16, attached to uh, the 911 hook again. And that bead, make sure that that, uh, that swivel doesn't jam inside there and it become semi-fixed, which is not what the fishery owner wants. So the perfect free running rig. Right, I'm sure many of you will uh, know how to load a method feeder up, or hybrid feeder, but uh, for those of you that don't, this is how I do mine. We're going to fish double maggot on this particular cast. So I'm putting, I'll have two red maggots, and as I said earlier, the fish here seem to like live maggots as opposed to dead ones, which is rather unusual for bream. Right, and the way I load that up is just a little scoop of the pellet. Make an indentation like that. Put the maggot on, or your hook bait inside. And then press down quite firmly and that's encasing the maggots in the feeder. And then we're ready to cast. Off we go. Cast out, and as we said before with the uh, pellet feeder, we want that to hit the bottom, which it just has then, and we don't want it to move. Not until a bream picks it up anyway. Another lovely fish, and that's what we come for. 
I've just had a right uh, quiet spell on the pellet feeder and that's uh, a sign to change over to the ground bait feeder and uh, after a couple of initial chucks to put some more bait in I'll just put him back for you after a couple of initial chucks to put some more bait in I've gone out and we've had three in uh, in three casts so uh, they might have turned up Chappy might be buying me tea tonight right we've used that ground bait up so I thought I'd just show you uh, how I prepare my ground bait for the feeder it's all mixed the night before it's just a sweet fish meal ground bait which is absolutely perfect for bream in my opinion uh, bream as we all know love a bit of fish meal so I mix it up the night before so it's inert there's no activity no bits coming off it and then uh, I keep it in a sealed bucket and I just get a few bits out as and when I want it, like that. And you may have noticed I've, it's, I've cut the bottom off a bucket. Cheap way of getting your ground bait ball so you can mix stuff up. And added to that, we put our dead maggots in, sieving the water off so we don't make the ground bait too dry. Mix that up. Few casters, Bream love casters. Mix that up. And the one thing I do like, I like to put an additive in, whether it's it just gives me the confidence or it actually does catch you more bream, that's open to debate. But um, I like, to, I like to use this liquid plum, a real good additive in my opinion. And here I've got um, an additive that, we, that I use for bream quite a lot on rivers to be fair. Uh, the sink, it's called sinking crumb. That will actually sink in the water bone dry. If I go like that, chappy might catch that. That sinks. You can see that in the clear water. And uh, when it's dampened down, it, it becomes soft and it expands. And it's just a little particle extra for the fish to grub about and keep them occupied. And with it being yellow, it stands out. And I put my liquid plum in that. Mix it up. Like that. Drop that in. Mix it up. And then we're ready to go. Look at that, what bream can resist that. And then uh, I like to mix just a, a small amount at a time and then it keeps the casters and the dead maggots as fresh as we can.
for an absolute delight this job is today. They don't know when to give up these fish at all. I haven't been to many places where bream fight like this. Another fantastic fish here at Starcar Lakes. And I think we're going to call it a day with this one. What a fantastic way to end this session. The question is, have I succeeded with the Chappy Challenge? Well, there you go, 17 bream. We've just weighed them, 52 pound 12 ounces. Beat Chappy's Challenge. Thanks for watching.